Ah, hello. You've caught me in Ashdown Forest, East Sussex, researching for one of my winter walks. This time of the year, the lighting being at a much lower angle, it provides superb opportunities for landscape photography. But of course, you need the right kind of day. You have to come well prepared in terms of clothing, nice warm clothing, because I think when I get out of the woodlands, then there'll be a bit of a breeze on the tops. Getting here by car might be a problem because of the weather. Uh, might be best to park the car, make sure it's locked and nothing visible that could be stolen and then go for your walk. After all, walking is the best form of exercise. I've done one better. I've come here by bus and it has cost me a penny. And maybe that's something I can recommend for you as well. Winter light can offer the clearest of perspectives in respect of a far distant view, especially when the wind is blowing from the north. So I just need to get out there and suffer for my art, don't I? Surprisingly, when I reached open heathland, it wasn't necessary to zip up my jacket, and, as expected, I could see East Grinstead in the far distance, and it's all down to the right sort of weather. If you want a delayed sunrise, that is, stay in bed a bit longer, then wait until December, when half past seven, that'll be about right, and in winter they are often better. Whilst I spot meter most of my photographs for sunrises and indeed sunsets, it is essential. Quite often there is heavy shadow that easily falls the meter on ESP or matrix, resulting, yes, in washed out colours. You can probably save the situation by saving to RAW and then carry out the processing in Lightroom or Photoshop. Regardless of season, it is often said that the best photographs are taken within a mile of your own doorstep. Now, my local landscapes are Causton Common and Kenley Common and a little further afield, Farthing Down. Why? Well, I have the luxury of slipping out at moment's notice when the light is interesting more difficult in places like the Lake District, now that is 300 miles away from me. We don't get much snow south of London, but when it comes it isn't always the right sort. Snow swiftly followed by blue skies is best, but be quick, because the sun will soon melt it all away. More difficult to achieve is snow on branches. If a snowfall is accompanied by wind, it won't settle where you want it, and achieving a perfectly still day with a blue sky and a dash of sunlight still eludes me, even a mile from home. Nevertheless, there have been many other opportunities created by the magic of winter light, capped, of course, by a hot toddy afterwards. I have photographed winter landscapes in other parts of the country, but now an understanding of weather patterns is more important. Whilst the palette is hardly limited and, in some cases, more inspiring, you are restricted by time that can be as brief, even shorter, than a day. Because of this, 
you become more aware of what is there and what is contributing to the scene beyond the subject itself. At Thaxted and Sisbury Ring, the subjects are silhouettes, and to a lesser degree at Blackheath, where the clouds are important. With a low sun and clouds breaking in the right places, angel rays are more common, and of course being winter, I don't have to wait too long for a sunset. And there's time for the pub afterwards, isn't there? As well as having the right sort of snow, you also need the right sort of landscape. And to be honest, northern climes respond better than the southern ones to winter light. Now the beach at Wittering, which is about as flat as you can get, does come up with the goods as does the South Downs near Brighton, a shot that has seen the greatest interest on YouTube and elsewhere. Not far away at Sheffield Park, but that is nowhere near the great city, is a National Trust property not far from Haywards Heath, worthy of a lengthy stay, and I have certainly chosen the right day. I haven't overlooked London, as it is almost on my doorstep, but usually handier for the theatre, which currently, because of Covid, I am missing. When venturing away from home, I have been lucky with weather. In Shropshire, I suffered for my art by photographing in a snowstorm. And yes, that is snow, not dust on my sensor. Olympus solved that problem years ago, and my camera can withstand this abuse, even if I can't. That is, I mean, the cold weather, the wind, not the dust on the sensor. Because of work... I was fortunate on several occasions in capturing some dramatic weather on certain Shropshire landscapes that responded well to inclement conditions. Now, they include Car Caradoc, Clun, that's the quietest place under the sun, of course, Stipestones, Longmind, and Titterstone Clee Hill. Dramatic lighting can also be witnessed in the Peak District and Yorkshire too, where I captured the moment when sheep were receiving their essential winter fodder. In England, it has to be admitted that the most magical place for winter landscape shots is the Lake District. There is nowhere quite like it in the country where you experience the captivating blend of mountain and lake scenery, all perfected by light. Back at home, whilst I will always keep alert to the possibility of looking forward to popping out to my local common for that amazing shot, here in the lakes I can think of no better place for us to now part company. <laughs> 